Today we're diving into the fascinating story of a small but mighty tool, one that most of us take for granted. It's easy to forget just how much of an impact this humble device has had on the world. But calculators weren't always pocket-sized or digital. Their journey has been a long and remarkable one, starting from simple counting tools and evolving into the sleek complex gadgets we use today. So let's take a look at how the pocket calculator came to be. Buckle up, it's a surprisingly interesting ride. Welcome to the history of simple things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. To truly appreciate the pocket calculator, we need to go back, way back, to ancient times. The abacus, one of the earliest known counting devices, was first used around 2000 BC in places like Mesopotamia and Egypt. Essentially, a frame with beads that could be slid along rods, it wasn't the same as a modern calculator, but it laid the groundwork for organized counting and arithmetic. The abacus remained widely used for centuries, and variations popped up across the world, like the Roman abacus, and the Chinese Swanpan. It helped people with basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Think of it as the great-grandfather of the calculator. But as human knowledge expanded, people needed something more efficient to tackle complex math problems. Fast forward to the 1600s and enter Napier's Bones, a tool that looked more like a ruler than a calculator. It was developed based on logarithms, discovered by Scottish mathematician John Napier. It allowed for quick multiplication, division, and even trigonometric calculations. It wasn't a perfect system, but for the time, it was revolutionary, and many engineers and scientists relied on it well into the 20th century. The real turning point came in the 17th century with the invention of mechanical calculators. Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician and philosopher created one of the first known mechanical calculators in 1642. His invention, called the Pascaline, used gears and wheels to perform addition and subtraction. Though it was groundbreaking, the Pascaline was limited to basic calculations and wasn't widely adopted due to its complexity and cost. A few decades later, German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz improved upon Pascal's design. He introduced the Leibniz wheel, which could handle not just addition and subtraction, but also multiplication. These early mechanical calculators were large, expensive, and far from portable, but they set the stage for the development of modern calculators. As time went on, various other mechanical calculators appeared, each slightly improving on the last. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, companies like Burroughs and IBM began mass-producing these devices, making them more accessible to businesses and offices. Still, they were bulky machines and not something you could slip into your pocket. Now, here's where things start to get really interesting. The next big leap happened in the 1960s with the invention of the first electronic calculators. These machines no longer relied on mechanical gears and wheels, Instead, they used transistors, a type of semiconductor, to perform calculations much faster and more efficiently. One of the earliest examples was the Anita, a new inspiration to arithmetic, introduced in 1961 by the British company Sumlock Comptometer. The Anita was a desktop-sized machine that could perform the basic four functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Though still quite large, it represented a major shift toward electronic computing. At the same time, companies like Casio, Sharp, and Texas Instruments were experimenting with new designs, all striving to create smaller, more practical devices. Texas Instruments, in particular, was a major player in this race. In 1967, their engineers developed the first handheld calculator prototype, known as Caltech. It could perform the basic four operations and, crucially, was small enough to be portable. In 1970, 
Canon released what is often considered the first true pocket calculator, the Canon Pocketronic. This sleek device, developed in collaboration with Texas Instruments, was still relatively large by today's standards, but for the time, it was revolutionary. It ran on rechargeable batteries and could be carried in a briefcase, far more convenient than the clunky desktop machines of the past. From there, the race was on. Sharp soon followed with their own version, the EL8, in 1971. The competition between companies like Sharp, Casio, and Texas Instruments spurred rapid advancements in the technology, leading to smaller, faster, and cheaper calculators. The early pocket calculators were expensive, though. For example, the Pocketronic sold for around $400, equivalent to over $2,500 today. Despite the high price, these devices were highly sought after, especially by engineers, scientists, and professionals who needed quick access to complex calculations. By the mid-1970s, the calculator market had exploded, and technological advancements made these devices more affordable and accessible to the average person. One major improvement was the shift from LED displays, which consumed a lot of power, to liquid crystal displays, or LCDs. LCD technology allowed for calculators to run longer on smaller batteries, which made them more practical for everyday use. In 1974, the Sharp EL805 introduced the world to the first LCD pocket calculator, revolutionizing both the design and function of calculators. This shift not only made calculators more energy efficient, but also led to further miniaturization, making the pocket in pocket calculator more literal. As we entered the digital age, the role of the pocket calculator shifted once again. With the rise of personal computers and smartphones, calculators began to move from hardware to software. Today, most people don't carry a physical calculator. They have one on their phone or computer. Despite the ubiquity of calculator apps, the pocket calculator still exists, particularly in fields like engineering, physics, and finance. Scientific calculators like the Texas Instruments TI-84 and the Casio FX series are still widely used by students and professionals alike. These devices offer specialized functions and reliability that smartphone apps can't always match. The evolution of the pocket calculator is a testament to human ingenuity. What started as simple counting tools eventually became complex machines, and today, Calculators exist as both physical devices and digital applications. Along the way, they've transformed how we learn, work, and interact with numbers. Even though technology continues to evolve, the pocket calculator holds a special place in history. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest tools can have the most profound impact. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, Feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.